But yeah. I thought, is he shaggy? Yeah, Will Forte is shaggy. Well, that's not cool. You have Matthew Willard back in there. Is that yeah. Lillard or Willard? Lillard. Lillard. Yeah. He directed a movie called uh, Don't Mess With The Fat Kid that's fucking awesome. Oh, yeah? And I kind of wanted him to keep making movies. I don't know if he does it or not. I'm sorry, Matthew Lillard. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> should, we, should we talk about comics? COVID pool. We find, we make a thing up and then we talk about it and you should read them if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or at least that's a good explanation. expand your horizons to look at new stuff that's already existed. Yeah, new comic books aren't coming out again quite yet, so we continue to talk about good old comic books mm. that are available. Mm. Yep. Uh, this week we're talking about spin-offs. Spin-offs! So comics that started within a different comic that became their own comic. Like Frasier, the comic. <laughs> <laughs> the acclaimed Actually, Alan Moore yeah, graphic novel, Frasier. I also didn't Frasier. know that Frasier was a spin-off, so no, he was this a, is news to me. He was a customer in Cheers. Which I did not know. Uh, yeah, I had no idea. That's hysterical. But, like, spin-offs we were talking about are pretty wide cover a wide variety of things, especially in like the superhero Marvel DC world of comics, where it's like, it's a Robin one. was introduced in Batman, and then like any like Robin or Nightwing comic is technically a spin-off. Yeah. So like, it's a very, it's a wide margin. Wolverine yeah. showed up in a Hulk comic, does that make yeah, Wolverine incredible. a spin-off? Stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, so anybody that showed up in another book and then got their own book, which happens a lot in comics, so we've learned as Most of the time, some yeah. of our favorites. Um, definitely less on indie books than the, the big superhero ones, but still, s still a lot of spinoffs. We're gonna we're gonna try to steer it away from. Oh, he showed up in the Superman comic. Now he's a character. Yeah, know, Batman. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna... uh, do we want to do a do a sandwich? Maybe start with one of our DCs. A, D a DC sandwich. Hey, DC, Dark Horse, DC. I mean, delicious. Yeah. I, I can go. Yeah, if you yeah. Want. Well, do your thing. Do whatever you want to do. No, but you were going to do... I don't care. Which one were you doing? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I like <laughs> Sandman. Everyone knows I like Sandman. I yeah. talk about Sandman and... I feel like that makes more sense okay. because, like, I... So we both like Lucifer. We both really like Lucifer. So this is a but Chris I, and Jason... I haven't read Sandman. I've only read the first two volumes. <laughs> I like them. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, was the second volume the one with like a serial killer convention? Yes. That, that, that one, I didn't expect to go there. Uh, <laughs> it, after two, after volume two, it it goes into the vertical universe and it kind of like strays away from having action and uh, like cameos from Swamp Thing and Constantine and stuff. I'm okay with that because the first volume was all very weird, like origin and trapped by the cult and yeah. spiritual. Where am I figuring out? And then the second one was that like we're at a serial killer convention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like. Oh, what? okay. Uh, it, it, it gets its own legs at volume three, in my opinion. Cool. But anyway, I, I like it all. There's not a there's not a bit of Sandman I don't like. But anyway, one of the characters in Sandman is Lucifer, in my favorite Sandman volume, where he where Morpheus finds out his wife, no, not wife, but like ex girlfriend from way back when, went to, he sent her to hell, and then Matthew the Crow bringing it back because I picked Matthew as my pet. <laughs> was kind of, he's actually a raven. Matthew the raven was like, you're a fucking dick. She just broke up with you because you're a mopey asshole and you sent her to hell. And he's like, yeah, that was a little extreme. Go get her out of hell. And he's like, all right, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then Morpheus goes to hell. And Lucifer's there. And he's like, whoa, Morpheus, what are you doing here? How's it going? And they all know each other. And he's like, I'm pretty good. How are you? Lucifer's like, I'm closing up shop. And Morpheus goes... What? He's like, I'm quitting. He's like, can you quit? I'm like, I don't see why not. <laughs> I'm done. So he kicks everyone out of hell. So all like people on Earth start to like come back to life as like zombies and like uh, all these demonic uh, astral beings start to come back and like other. There's there's a fight in hell for like who's going to take yeah. up the mantle. And everyone like and yeah. 
But anyway, I digress. It's not what Lucifer's about. And uh, Lucifer retires and he moves to California and opens up a piano jazz club. Oh, that's the TV show. That's the TV show. That's where the TV show and the comic end. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lucifer in Sandman's a little bit more jokey. He's a little more like devil may care. Uh, he's way more stoic in Lucifer. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's he does not really relish being Lucifer. He doesn't really care about that. He's just really smart and conniving, and he just has certain goals, and that's kind of it. Uh, it's a long arc. It was twelve skinny volumes. Twelve single, now. but one one singular story uh, with tangents there and there. It stars Lucifer himself, uh, and it goes through his arc as what he does after he leaves hell. Yeah. Uh, what he's doing then, and it's very fantastical. Uh, it's also very brutal. That's another thing too. Uh, it's not brutal in like people getting tortured in hell. You okay with the salt? Yeah. Okay. It's it's very uh, it's not brutal in the sense of like people being hung in hell and being poked with uh, tridents and all that stuff. What do we call the trident? Pickaxe? No, pick. pick pitchfork. 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 Yeah. 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 People aren't. That's that's not what is brutal about it. They set up characters and then they like kill them. Like that's what's brutal about that. Sweet. Uh, unceremoniously. But it's it's great to see if you wanna if you're ever curious about what Lucifer's doing now. I would recommend this. <laughs> I liked that they took a character that often gets kind of like sidelined or troped or whatever, yeah. and uh, they gave him a personality. He's sort of like, kind of like, he moves like the vampires in like a in like an Anne Rice thing move. Yeah. Like everything he does has like this plan that won't be realized now it's gonna take like x amount of years or whatever because he's like an eternal being who experiences time like kind of outside of like what humans experience so every time someone has like a conversation with him that's like we need this going now he's just kind of like and I feel like, it's, <laughs> yeah, that, he's and very I love languid. And that about it. And it's very languid. It's mostly just people sitting down and talking about philosophy. And there's occasionally like an intergalactic astral war. <laughs> like, um, I remember when the show was announced, or like a yeah. season or two was out, and I saw a bit of it. I'm like, this seems kind of cool and dark. And then I found out it was just like another buddy cop show. I was like, oh, never mind. It's nothing like it's that. It's very confusing to me, the adaptation. Because, yeah, JP is watching it, and he was like, Oh, we really love it. I should read the comic. I'm like, it's nothing like that. In the comic, he goes and finds, like, conceptual beings, which I guess is very, like, Sandman. Yes. And then uh, undermines their operations just because he's been around so long, he knows what it's about. And his whole goal in everything he does is just to dismantle the system of heaven and hell and create like a realm where nothing matters and there's no deities and nothing exists. Yeah, it's very much like a John Locke <laughs> Like that's his thing. It's just like yeah. question authority, dismantle it if you have to. Like that like yeah. it's very true to like the old like uh what's the word I'm looking for? Uh Paradise Lost version of Lucifer. He's not like he's not the incarnation of evil. He does yeah. not give a shit about just being mean for the meat spirits. Yeah. <laughs> no, he just is the guy who said why. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then got thrown out for it. And Michael's in it and God went missing and stuff like that. So like there's a brother economy to do it that I kinda like think is yeah, really cool the, too. Yeah, that's the the newer stuff. Um in the first couple the first couple issues and chapters, like Mike Carey, you could tell tries to quantify what Lucifer can and cannot do, and then he just gives up. He's just like, what, why am I doing that? He's like, 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 he's, like he's intangible. Like, there's really no reason for that. <laughs> yeah, the only reasons they give in the comic for him not being able to do things yeah. are that there are other beings in place who prevent something from happening. Yeah. So those are sort of the adventures he goes on, is he seeks out those sort of mythical like beings, yeah. and then work tries to find a workaround to whatever sort yeah. of force they're holding together. There are rules. It's just yeah. he likes to break them. That's the thing. Like that's the he the so my character breaks how. up he, <laughs> he makes up rules for how this universe works and by the universe I mean actually this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then has Lucifer just kinda like deconstruct that. 
Uh, it's yeah, and it's not only an ed edgy anti-establishment like deity in a book about philosophy and conceptual beings. Yeah. I'm I'm sold personally, and it's, and it's very like literary heavy too. I think that's a nice spin-off of Sandman because Sandman is very about like this, the nature of creativity and Shakespearean themes and all this jazz. And this one is similar to that, but it dips its toe in like. Like what I said, like philosophy and John Locke and, and Socrates and all that jazz. Like, like it, it, it wants to, it, it does the same thing in a different manner, with a different lens. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's good. I like it a lot. The only thing better than it is Sandman. Do you know what? <laughs> Isn't incredibly deep and laden with philosophy and the themes and and questions about creativity and Shakespearean schemes. I don't know. But it's still a very fun read. I don't know, what? Lobster Johnson. <laughs> Who's Lobster Johnson? Excellent question as always, Jason. Thanks, um, bud. <laughs> Lobster Johnson is a character from the pages of Hellboy, whom we all know and love, but uh, Lobster Johnson showed up in a Hellboy story, continued to show up in some BPRD stories, and then got his own series, Lobster Johnson. I don't really know a ton about him. Is he like the Captain America of the BPRD world? Kind of. Okay. So, so in the current continuity, he's dead. He died in like the 30s or 40s fighting the Nazis. Okay. So whenever he shows up in Hellboy or in BPRD, he's like a ghost, helping them in ghostly ways. Yeah. But basically, so yeah, he was like a costumed Nazi hunter in the 30s and 40s. Um, and against just like general crime. But he actually existed. So, yes, yes okay. but so he was yes. working alone for a while. Then he worked for the government. Yeah. But to this day, the government denies his existence. Okay. But Hellboy is a huge fan. So they were like in the world of Hellboy, there were Lobster Johnson comics and movies and stuff. And Hellboy is like, oh, he's so cool. And even the shady or like the organization <laughs> Hellboy works for is like, no, he didn't exist. Even though they deal with all this other stuff. But he was indeed a real Nazi hunter. He had no superpowers. He's just like a dude in black with guns, and his signature thing is he's got a lobster claw on like his chest and yeah. on his glove, and he like burns the claw into villains' foreheads. Oh, nice. But like, I would recommend personally Lobster Johnson just for like, like I said, it's not the, the deep ongoing philosophy of like a Neil Gaiman title, but it's just like, it's fun. Pulpy. It's an amazing pulp, like noir version, almost Captain America y, but he's like, he's more of a vigilante than that. It's more like the shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's like it takes, it's like, punk. it feels like reading Hellboy. It's in the same world, because there is mysticism and the magic yeah. comes in and stuff, but that's it's basically way like. Less. Yeah, it's like if you like Hellboy, but you want a little less spookies and a little more like 20s to 40s like mob Nazi action. Yeah, then... it's very noir, it's very like finding out what's going on, what's the plot, so yeah. that he can show up and punch a guy. Yeah, and like he's not, <laughs> we're never, we never see like his childhood or his origins or how he became the law. He's just he's one him. of those like kind of like deadpan badasses who just it, like, oh I was a child, I had a pet lobster, like it's never, he's, he's actually not even called Lobster Johnson. In the comics they call him the lobster. Oh, yeah. okay. But like his alter ego, which is not really known to be true because it was alter ego in the fake pulp yeah. serials, is like a crippled, like wheelchair bound millionaire William Johnson. Do Hellboy and like a ghost of Lobster Johnson ever meet or anything? Yes. Okay. Cool. They first meet, I believe, in the Conqueror Worm, which is a very popular <clears throat> Hellboy arc. <laughs> so he pops up there as like a ghost because he like failed and died trying to stop Nazis there, and the mission Hellboy is there to do is sort of to do with Related. the repercussions of yeah. that failed mission. Cool. But uh, yeah, it's just he's very he says very cheesy. Like pulpy things, like beware the claw of justice, right before he like jumps off a rooftop. Like it's very purposefully like blocky, and he'll hold a guy down in front of him and be like, "I inflict justice, for I am the claw, and feel its wrath," and then like burns a claw on the forehead. It's yeah. goofy, and the um that the new Hellboy movie starring David Harbour with, with Thomas, Thomas Hayden Church. Church as Hellboy, it actually like the short scene that he's in like captures the cheesiness of it. The books like the sort of pulpy like bam pow fighting gangsters in the 30s like it kind of fits that yeah because he's just like love thomas hayden church and he's not like the trim like jack superhero of today he's like he's straight up portly in the movie which mm -hmm. i kind of love for this character which personally. is kind of neat because thomas hayden church can be like super muscular exactly yeah he's not like a jacked superhero he's just like a it reminds me of like when you see people playing superheroes in like the 1940s yeah they didn't 
they're, they're, they're in shape, shape yeah. but they're not like the ridiculous standard of today. So I kind of like that look they're for Lobster beefy. Johnson. There's a difference. Yeah. But he's he, got like a dad shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, but in the movie, he literally like shows up t over the, all the Nazis, like Guten Tag, mm -hmm. and then like flips off the roof and shoots them. And then like, I forget exactly what he says, but he does the restating. He's like, I beware the claw of justice, and like burns it in the forehead. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's deadpan. He's. Doesn't get a lot of character development, but <laughs> it's it's Magnoliverse, and it's great. Yeah. You got some great character designs, some great villain designs. I'm personally a big fan of the villain in Volume Two here. It's just like a ghostly you Nazi. Of a... It's like a flaming Nazi ghost skeleton in an overcoat with like black flames. <laughs> it's just you remind me of the... yeah, the gray ghost from Batman. Gray Remember ghost, him? yeah. Where like Batman series. was inspired by the Grey Ghost. Okay. There we go. We got this spooky overcoat. Oh, that's really cool. I like that a lot. And the black flames yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And then it was voiced by Adam West. How cute was that? It was a great episode. Yeah. But yeah, Lobster Johnson. There are totally, like I said, he shows up in BPRD. But I think there are six trade paperback volumes, and that's like the entirety of his story. They're always like co-written by Mike McNola and David Arcudi. Mm -hmm. They get a few different artists rolling through, but they always like capture that like 2D matte look mm -hmm. of like the original Hellboy art. Yeah. Um, it's just like a pulpy. If you if you like just like watching vigilantes, just like punch Nazis. Mm -hmm. It's a good time. Al Cootie's good at <laughs> really good at two very different sides of the spectrum. He's good at like hard boiled, <laughs> gruesome like real real life stuff, or he's good at like. Sunday newspaper action <laughs> Superman <laughs> stuff. And I guess that falls more in line with that. I'd be, I'd be excited to check that out. Because he did. The, he used to do those Wednesday com Superman comics that we tried for like a hot minute in the mid-2000s. Did anybody remember that? No. Oh, fuck. You remember that? No. On Sunday, it used to be a full-page color spread of a Superman comic. In the, uh, what, he, yeah, and he wrote it. Oh. It was cool. It was cool for a minute, but then like they tried to like keep newspapers alive, it didn't really work out. <laughs> anyway, Chris, what do you got? Spin off. Frasier? Um, no. Oh my god, I'm so sorry to cut you off, but I have a quote I remember I wanted to share. The Joey show? <laughs> <laughs> so Joey had a show, right? Yeah, Joey. In, uh, in one of the last BPRD volumes that Lobster Johnson appears as a ghost in, mm -hmm. um, they sort of like, you know, he's a ghost because he has unfinished business, right? So they sort of help him solve it. And then it's said in the book that um, having found his own sort of peace in an afterlife where he could continue his battle against Nazis and the forces of evil forever after. Oh. <laughs> that, that's his idea of eternal peace is forever just fighting Nazis in the afterlife. And that's I respect fair. that. Yeah. <laughs> I can get behind that. <laughs> um, so I... Didn't really know that one of my favorite titles is a spin-off. Yeah. Uh, so I really like Hellblazer. I love John Constantine stuff. Uh, I've always read a ton of it. And uh, I knew he appeared in Swamp Thing, but I didn't know his first appearances were in Swamp Thing. Yeah. And wanna... then he became his own title. I want to say it was Alan Moore's run on Swamp Thing that introduced him. I feel yeah, like but he I didn't him? know Not there sure, was like but... a gap between, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I thought they ran congruently. Mm -hmm. uh, and they crossed over because Swamp Thing shows up in Hellblazer. Mm -hmm. um, but it turns out Hellblazer is a spin off. So this made it very easy for me. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's a wide net we're casting, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so these volumes also uh, got recently re-released as, uh, as consecutive volumes, so you could read them somewhat chronologically. But it used to be that Hellblazer would come out as kind of like standalone arcs. Um, because a lot of different sort of writers and artists have taken up the Hellblazer mantle. Um, well, that's what I kind of like about what what Hellblazer means for like the comic community. It's kind of like a trial by fire for new writers, right? Like yeah. they, they bring them in, like Mike Carey, Garth Ennis, Ryan Azzarello, mm -hmm. especially the British Invasion apparently. Grant <laughs> <laughs> Warren Ellis, Grant Morrison, they all, they all wrote Hellblazer. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. But Hellblazer as a concept like has my number, like Devil May Care, like a protagonist who uh, never really attaches to anyone, like there's no like deeper meaning to his life necessarily. He fights occult stuff, there's a lot of like weird lore, 
and like rules the demon things that he like makes his way out of by kind of like tricks of the trade and like doesn't really have any power of his own except for stolen power so he's constantly kind of like making deals or like wielding small magics yeah he doesn't really have trinkets he's not he's not like a navy he's not magical, super right mm, yeah. um <laughs> he's just like uh, a noir detective almost that happens to specialize in the occult yeah the, those are my favorite arcs with hellblazer in it is like we're we're confronting the magical world uh with a very like amoral and uh, and mortal protagonist who only manages to survive on sort of like the the just the wits yeah it's like yeah the skin of his teeth yeah. and the willingness to kind of like cut anyone else out of a deal if it doesn't suit him. Oh, he's a selfish jerk, that's for sure. Oh, he's the worst. Yeah, yeah <laughs> he's like a booze sodden, like cigarette smoking piece of garbage, um, and that's. It's the best. Because, <laughs> like, then he's fighting demons who will literally eat babies. Like, there's an arc where a demon is, like, do this thing that I want you to do. And he's like, no. And he's in the hospital. And the demon literally goes to the ward where babies are being born and starts eating them. And is like, I will continue to eat babies until you do what I want you to do. <laughs> in the way he got them. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like... It's great. I love it. Uh, I, but that's that's the sort of grim, dark, like greasy world that you're living in, and it's not it's not like '90s grit where it's like oh everyone's a rapist or a murderer or whatever. It's like no, it's like these are occult beings, like demons. Like uh, it's very akin to Lucifer, but I I feel a little bit better in that the protagonist has to scrap for it whereas lucifer is a little debonair like yeah. kind of over it mm -hmm. so the stakes are different and it deals with more like addiction and substance abuse and stuff like that because there's a there's a, there's a he's always crawling out to yeah. crawl back in right yeah. like you see enough of that stuff that it's like there are arcs where he's not been a part of whatever is going on for a while because he just has to break yeah like also, he chronologically ages, which is different for everybody else, too. Yes, uh, and I do appreciate this. Like, he's close to his 60s now in, in, mm -hmm. in canon. Uh, yeah. Not in the, like, the, the, the Hellblazer reboot. title we were getting. He has, right? no, no, he has demon blood in him, so it makes him look a little fresher, but, oh, like, okay. he, he acknowledges, like, he's 54 or whatever. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, and then the older version of him, there's, like, an overlap. Right? 